All right, here's an update on our ag commodity trade. I'm Marlon Bowling with you. I want to welcome aboard uh, Mr. Ted Seifert of Zaner Ag Hedge. He's located in Chicago. And uh, Ted, thanks for uh, joining us here as we look at the volatility in today's trade. This whole week has been kind of goofy, hasn't it? Um, I mean, it's a short trading week. We suspected we might have some volatility after a three-day holiday weekend. And I guess so far it's lived up to expectations for the most part, right? Yeah, you know, the funny thing is we didn't really see the volatility on Tuesday when we came back from the three-day holiday yeah. weekend. Yesterday, it really got rolling to the upside, and today, we're really rolling to the downside. You know, welcome to the weather market, Marlon. Uh, this is what happens, right? I mean, we had just shot up out of a cannon. Uh, we got very overbought, and it really just needed some sort of spark to see a pretty massive pullback. And that came in the form of a much wetter six- to ten-day outlook. Uh, whether that verifies or not is a big question mark. We haven't really been able uh, to put a whole lot of trust in the weather forecast when it's doing something like that, because the closer we get, it falls out. So whether that happens or not this time, I don't know. Uh, again, your weather, a lot of the weather forecasters have been calling for this weather pattern change to happen for the last few weeks, and it just really hasn't. Is it happening now? And this is what the market's trying to weigh. In the meantime, you had a real big capitulation in soybean oil yesterday based on the uh, EPA proposals. Uh, and following lower here today, yesterday it wasn't enough to really put a lot of pressure on us. Today, it really is putting quite a bit of pressure on us. The spot crush margins have really fallen apart in the last couple of days and had already been falling apart for the last couple of months. Uh, so now you got now you got demand questions on the crush again. Uh, we know exports are a question mark. So so days like today, when you have a wet of a forecast, after a big sharp rally, you're overbought, you need a correction. Now you're going to hear all this talk about, you know, demand and things like that. Things that we have not talked about for the last couple of weeks. And I really haven't heard anybody talking about uh, Brazil soybean oversupply for quite a while now. It kind of went back into the shadows after we had, uh, you know, all that drought talk here the last couple of weeks. Yeah, you're right. I mean, when we have a drought situation, when we have a weather situation, all we talk about are yields, all we talk about the supply side of things. But then you get a little relief on that on that outlook, on that forecast, and we go back to talking about the things that we were talking about three weeks ago, which were all very bearish as we were putting in our yearly lows. Well, it comes flooding back into the market. And again, I'm, I'm not saying we're out of the weather market at this point. I really don't think we are. But we had come up so far so quickly, we were due for some sort of correction and the spark for that is that cooler forecast, or wetter forecast, along with the crush margins really falling apart in soybeans. Well, and the point I was trying to make yesterday was, you know, I get it with the rally in the corn. You know, it is coming up on tasseling time and the heat and the dryness and all that, I, that can affect the corn. I'm a little uh, dubious though on, on expecting a big rally in soybeans yet because their critical time isn't coming for a month yet, right? Yeah, and you know, a lot of people will say that beans like to get stressed early in the season just to finish off well, uh, and that's that's a recipe for some really big yields. I, I suppose that's possible. I, I don't know. It's really hit or miss because at some point, plants start to die when they just haven't had moisture. I don't think we're at that point yet, Marlon, but if we do miss out on this next rain, it will obviously be a very big problem for corn. But I think you really do feel like the, you know soybeans are going to struggle as well. So yes, uh, today, right, you know, with that, that, that moisture in the forecast, we think that, hey, this bean crop can get saved and we could still hit some very big yields, possibly trend line, possibly even better. But again, you know, how long are we going to do that? If this forecast continues to fail, well, I, you got to rally everything, I think. Yeah, that's a big if. All right, November soybeans right now are trading 42 cents lower. Uh, let's bring back that uh, November uh, chart. We're at 1335 and a quarter. Uh, catching the corn here on the way back, we have December eight and a half lower now at 620 and a quarter. It's a little bit off of its earlier low, but still struggling. And then on the wheat in Chicago, September up three and a half cents right now. In Kansas City, we have September wheat five and a half higher at 877 and a half. And meanwhile, we'll check out the spring wheat trade. Uh, they're supposed to get a lot of rain up there, but they're going higher anyway. Uh, we have September six and a quarter higher at 888. We'll come back and talk more with Ted Seifert about Thursday's markets right after this. All right, now let's take a look at what's going on on the other side of the ledger. Let's go over to livestock, shall we? Let's look at the live cattle trade. Our quotes are from bar chart. August now 40 lower. Check that now 35 lower at 169.40. 
And if you go way out to February, it's actually about a dime higher way out there. Now, if you look at feeders at the moment, we have the August 67 higher at 228.40. And that's still off of our earlier high of the day by about a buck and a quarter. And we have the September drop, or excuse me, up by 90 cents right now. Now, on the lean hog trade, let's go over there. Uh, here you have August, $2.17 lower at 90.60. A lot of pressure there, and we're over $3 off of our earlier high of the day. Wow, that's a big turnaround. Let's go back to Ted Seifert here. That's a, that's a huge reversal in the lean hogs here so far this morning, Ted. Yeah, you know, it really kind of feels like soybeans too, right? I mean, at some point you say, hey, we've really shot up off the lows very quickly. Maybe we've overpriced in uh, the change in fundamentals, and now we need to correct this market a little bit. And again, it's a very similar feeling to soybeans. Uh, as far as cattle are concerned, you know, that was a, a bull market that had been overheated, but a much different market than, say, what's happened in the last couple of weeks in soybeans, corns, or corn or hogs. That's a very long-term bull market, right? And at some point, we're due for corrections. And we're kind of at the time of year where we can say, hey, packers might be caught up. Cash needed to cool off at some point. I think it is going to continue to cool off a little bit more. And you're seeing that reflected on the board. Now, the feeders have really been the problems. They're the ones that really came off hard breaking trend lines that chart doesn't look great so it is kind of nice to see the feeder cattle up a little bit today especially with corn being down as much as that as much as it is well put all right thank you ted for joining us here today on a very busy thursday i appreciate the help ted seifert of zener ag hedge with us from chicago so we continue to bounce along here tammy